My name is uh, Brett Malone. I am with Vitech, and uh, I'm very excited and pleased to be talking to you today about model-based systems engineering. We're going to be talking about this in the context of empowering the organization. And I'm using the empowering term very literally because what we're seeing is a trend towards system engineering organizations uh, carrying more and more of the burden and the workload of documentation, documentation management, and they're losing a bit of the footing of the grip on the overall impact of the project program and the project. So we're looking to empower system engineering groups to have more influence, more say early on in the project life cycle so that uh, cost and risk can be avoided downstream in the program. A brief outline on our topics. We're going to have three parts to this uh, talk this afternoon. We're going to first talk about some of the issues facing the systems engineering organizations. We're going to do a very brief conceptual and high-level overview of MBSE, model-based systems engineering, uh, and the differentiators between model-based, document-based. We're then going to tie it all together and talk about how we use this methodology to reconnect with the organization. So we're going to talk about how uh, organizations can use this model-based framework to uh, begin to provide more insight, more wisdom early on. I'm going to cheat, and for those of you who like to get the answers right up front, uh, we're going to go over the summary. I'm going to talk to you right now about some of our concluding items, our concluding remarks, and then we're going to work backwards, and I'm going to explain how we got there. Um, certainly, model-based systems engineering is a tool that helps empower the systems groups through wisdom. And this is a very fanciful word, but it really is, is just talking about gaining more insight, uh, more knowledge, more wisdom about your system earlier on in the process. The model is used to help you uncover uh, risks that may not have emerged through linear methods, and it also helps you understand more of the trade-offs. MBSE is a very simple concept. We're going to walk through in three or four slides the fundamental uh, glue for model-based approaches, and everything scales from that. And certainly exercising this model that we're creating um, is really driving the value. So this model creates a value for the organization. And the concept of integrating or empowering the systems engineering group within an organization our, uh, our conclusion, our focus, is that integration is a conversation. It's a two-way street. It's a back and forth uh, between ma program management, test and evaluation, and systems engineering groups. So uh, clearly, it's, it's not uh, what you're familiar with in terms of uh, outdated waterfall models or even you know these, these more fancy methods that have a lot of iteration. This is just a, a fundamental, simple back-and-forth conversation. And if you decompose and break this, this problem down, if you look at this in very simple terms, model-based systems engineering is a way to carry on this conversation in a very natural and meaningful language. And the conversation couldn't be more important at this point. Systems are certainly complex, and uh, the stakes are much higher. And the complexity of these systems where you have discrete, uh, dissimilar components, you have systems of systems, and you have maybe a communication system that needs to tie in with a navigation uh, and a satellite system, an image tracking and video system. So there are just a lot of moving parts that go on in large, complex architectures. So systems engineering has a critical role to play, but what we're seeing is that they're not connected. They're not connected, and as we said, they're not really empowered because they're bogged down with the duties of managing documentation. And this gives them limited impact. However, we know that the potential of uncovering these risks and cost pr uh, drivers early on is a key uh, to helping these programs succeed. Um, as we mentioned, you know, we don't want to put systems engineering in a box where we're bookkeepers, we're documentation experts, we're managing, uh, archiving, and being good stewards and good librarians of this information. We have a critical role to play, and it goes well beyond uh, documentation and auditing. These are critical functions, but our role to play is much larger. 
And how many times has this happened in your organization where your systems engineering group may be working towards one track and uh, you're bombarded by the capture team that's coming in dictating a solution to you? So, you know, the, the reason we get bogged down and the reason that a lot of times systems engineering organizations um, have a hard time keeping up is that, you know, we, we need a methodology that helps us move quickly and, and, and help us move uh more swiftly in the agile environment in this in this team especially in a b and p environment where you're moving very quickly you're assembling large capture teams and you have to be able to provide uh, this proposal development this capture effort with critical insight early on to stay ahead of the team the schedules for example another scenario that may be or going on in your organization is just a fundamental uh, lack of communication between program management, systems engineering, and execution. So the schedules that are represented at one level may not be very consistent with the system engineering plan that's, uh, that you're being um, asked to develop. And so uh, trying to stay synchronized is what's really important about this conversation. And it's not just integration with PM. We can see the same impact downstream. So test and evaluation plans uh, must be aligned with the functionality of the system. And a lot of times what we see is there's a disconnect between what's being tested and what was identified as critical functional elements within the system. So again, this model creates a way to communicate. So these are symptoms of an organization that's, that's really just struf struggling with lack of influence, lack of empowerment, and not having the impact. So as we see it, you know, we, we want to remain busy with the work of impacting and influencing the program. Uh, you know, a lot of times we can get tied down, bogged down with document management, documentation, and um, we're not really impacting. So we're busy, but maybe not as effective as we could be. Where does the influence come from? And for that, then we would want to move over into part two. And I want to talk just a little bit about the overview of a model-based approach. And let's talk about it through some key concepts that you'll hear me explain over the next few minutes. Uh, model-centric versus document-centric. What we're doing when we're building a model is building relationships. And the relationships are what the, the key element that helps us create thoughtful traceability. You want to think about building a model from a standpoint of elements and relations. You also want to think about what we call representations, pictures, documents, diagrams. Everyone has their favorite uh, form. We want to think about these diagrams or these representations as meaningful output. These are generated from the model. They're not um, the model. They're not the means to, they're not the end. They're a means to the end. So they're, they're output. They're meaningful but they're not driving the model. And finally, for a model to be truly effective, it should be what we call executable. Executable means you can literally step through the logic, step through the functions of the model. So simulation is a way to execute a model, and executing the model is where the knowledge comes from. So dynamic decision making is really created through this dynamic sim the simulation engine. And we're, we're going to show you a little bit about uh, what that means towards the tail end of this presentation, so impacting the organization. Vendors today um, are muddying the waters. Uh, Model-based systems engineering and MBSE uh, has a lot of confusing language around it and some vendors are making it appear to be more complicated than it really is. And uh, we're here to talk about the simplicity of model-based systems engineering and its concept. It starts with simply identifying elements or entities and relationships. So we're going to show just a few uh, pictures on what that means. It's also the ability to start anywhere and iterate. You know, we have abandoned a very, this very linear model uh, because information comes at us from all different directions and for us to be effective we need to be, a, be comfortable with the idea of starting anywhere, adding, iterating, and moving on from level to level in the model. And as we already talked about, documentation 
representations and diagrams, they need to be the output. They are the output. Uh, a lot of times we get hung up with just trying to make the perfect diagram, the perfect chart, or coming up with the perfect um, um, diagram that's needed for our report. And it's really putting the cart before the horse. The documentation should follow from a well-designed model. So in three or four easy slides, I'm going to walk through the fundamental concepts of what model-based systems engineering um, is how it's architected how it, and how it can work for you. So let's start and I, I promise you this is going to be very simple. Um, overly simple for those of you who have a deep understanding and knowledge of object-oriented approaches or model approaches. So bear with me. But it starts simply with an entity, a thing, an object. And uh, we're going to use just a very simple picture. Uh, let's use a targeting pod as an example for our model. Let's say we have a requirement to build a targeting pod to meet certain functional specs and we want to look at how does this thing decompose. An entity is where we would typically think about um, how this this item is constructed, a sensor. So we have a, a, an element, an entity that's a sensor that we're creating that becomes a, a key piece of information in our model. Concept two, these entities or these elements have attributes. Their properties, their things that describe them. Again, very simply, uh, for example, this sensor might have a detection range, and it certainly might uh, would have a cost associated with it. So let's open up our sensor and see what's inside. So the idea of having a model and having elements in a model means that you have information behind these elements that can help you make decisions. It can help you build links, and that linkage is the key third concept. So building relationships from entities is really the power of model-based systems engineering. Uh, here's our favorite sensor that we just described with its properties behind it. But as we know, it doesn't live alone. It lives as part of a larger component or larger system. For that, then, we can show that the targeting pod uh, is part of, or the sensor is part of the targeting pod along with the signal processor and certainly many other elements and components uh, both in parallel and below that. But this key relationship, the sensor is built in the targeting pod. This is the element, these are the, the simple concepts that everything in the model-based systems engineering world is scaled from. So congratulations, you have just made it through the three key concepts and we have designed our targeting pod. As we said, everything grows from that. So we can scale tremendously complex models with um, great logic and functional flow. And we can represent these models with very many different diagrams. But as we've talked about, all of these concepts come home to roost in terms of the entities in our database and the relationships that we build between these entities. And so as you approach implementing model-based systems engineering. As you think about migrating from a more static document-driven process, uh, stay focused on the simplicity of model-based methodology. And the model-based approach and these concepts that we just talked about can be used to help build the overall pro methodology in your group. So being able to go through and understand the requirements and understand how to build the behavior or the functions and understanding how to define the architecture in a way that you build relationships along the way and even being able to understand designing the verification and the validation. So these component, these activities uh, are all related. So not only do you build relationships between elements, but you, be, you build relationships between elements in each one of these activities. And so this is how you can build this interdependency. And this is how you can build on a centralized model that has knowledge of 